All right, time for another Nerdy Virgin podcast where uh, I'm uh, still dealing with this possible pineal cyst. It's been a week since uh, a doctor called me and said, hey, don't worry about this. It's going to be fine. It's no big deal. And uh, that got me about five days of rest and relaxation. And then I just started worrying again. (laughs) You know what I'm learning? Like, the doctor telling me it's going to be okay is, in and of itself, a drug. And I'm building up a higher tolerance. I need... I'm going to need, you know, once a day, just a phone call from a doctor. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. I'm worried that that what I just riffed right there might be something Mark Maron have done, has done. I don't know. You know, there might be some overlap with the neurotic Jew stuff. You know, but I have to wait until July 19th. Now, assuming they have an appointment, because I'm told I can only call three weeks in advance. So now I'm freaked out that when I call, they're like, ah, it's filled. They said I need to get the scan in three to six months. There is a casualness. This is what everyone keeps telling me. You know, if it was really serious, they'd call you in immediately. Would they? Yeah, we're really putting a lot of faith in uh, the healthcare system suddenly. Now, the problem is, I'm reading all the symptoms of like either a huge cyst or a tumor. You know, when it starts pushing against the brain, what are the symptoms? And one of the symptoms is uh, like uh, not dis- not blurry vision, but visual distortions. And I've noticed that I do see like these squigglies. Like it's not enough to where I impedes my vision, but I feel like I've been seeing it for years, which makes me wonder if this is, if I had this for years or if it's even related. But now this is the, every time I read what the symptom is, I start to think I have the symptom. This is a nightmare. It really is. And of course the irony is that I'm going through all this stress over this and watch somewhere else in my body like there's an aorta that's about to burst and the aorta is like little does he know (laughs) barking up the wrong tree so I'm in the process of just living every day to the fullest you know the one thing I did do is that I am writing more I'm, I'm, uh, there are things that I wanted to work on that I'm working on now. So that is the one adjustment I made, and I'm doing that at the beginning of the day. It, it turns out, what's on my bucket list? Love? No. Generate another sci-fi comedy novel and self-publish it. That's, it turns out, that's, that's the holy grail for me. So... Can I also say I'm slightly offended that I made a few videos on TikTok and Instagram about the cyst. They don't get nearly as many views as uh, the videos I make about Star Wars. Feels a little, you know, like the social media community is like, yeah, 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 tell us more about Jar Jar Binks. Who, by the way, can I say, I feel tremendous guilt over any Jar Jar joke I ever made and I feel like I need to apologize to the universe well not to the universe to the guy who played Jar Jar because it really hurt him when everyone was just talking about how terrible it was and now I have a tremendous amount of guilt about that I mean you know when I say tremendous you know not I mean I'm not you know up all night over it certainly not right now Maybe this is what causes the cyst. Getting hung up on these things. 
And, and the, that's the other thing, that when they say it's a possible cyst, from the research I've done, it's very unlikely that this was like an error or like a smudge. <laughs> it's not going to be a situation where the guy was like, oh, a piece of my muffin fell on the MRI. And... No, it's possible cyst. Like, the best case scenario here is that it's a cyst. If it's not a cyst, it's not as good. <laughs> so, I'm, I find myself actually rooting for the cyst. We're hoping for the cyst. Cyst good news. I'm hoping they're able to figure... I mean, that's the other thing, too, is that it's so deep in the brain that they don't want to go in there unless they absolutely have to. So, they're going to just keep taking pictures. And I'm hoping that, you know, the pictures are clear enough because then I'm reading about how there are other conditions that can mimic a cyst. And I'm like, is this a, you know, is someone, is something pretending to be a cyst? Like, is this a, you know, is this a, a MacGyver situation? MacGyver's the wrong guy to, no, 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 who's the master of disguise? Was it the saint? I think the saint was the master of disguise, right? Mission Impossible, you get the idea. So we're hoping, we're hoping for the cyst. Best case scenario best case scenario, it's a sack of fluid that doesn't belong there. And that's... Meanwhile, you've got my dad over here who's got neuropathy, which is... <laughs> and this, 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 by the way, what happened to my dad is the epitome of damned if you do, damned if you don't. So he doesn't want to die either. We both want to live. I don't know. He's, Go figure. So he's taking these multivitamins and he starts getting this burning sensation in his tongue and in his feet. Goes to the doctor. Turns out he's overdosing on vitamin B6 from one of the multivitamins. So he stops taking it. But the burning sensation doesn't go away. So there's nerve damage because he... <laughs> because he's, he's, he, he is actively trying not to die, and it did more damage than not taking it. So what I'll do is I'll say that, I'll, I'll think about that, and then I'll say, you know what, I'm eating the Pop-Tart. Well, I'm going <laughs> to... Why? There's, there's no way to win. And that could be the theme of this entire thing. You know that there. That at the end, ultimately, there's there's going to be no. There, there's no way to win. There's no way to beat this. By this, I mean death. So. That's a bit of a downer. Nerve damage from vitamins. That's a thing. Did you know that was a thing? Well, now you do. You can live with that. So, I'm, uh, <laughs> and then the other problem is that every, you know, like I have itchy eyes, probably because I never clean my apartment. And then I'm in my, I'm thinking, oh my God, what if the itchy eyes are symptoms of the cyst? What if I got the cyst because I didn't clean my apartment? What if I got the cyst because I didn't give that unhoused person money when he asked for it? It's, it's uh, really, it's a thrilling, it's a thrilling adventure, ain't it? Truly. So, people are reaching out, which is very nice. You know what it feels like, though, when people reach out like this? And I, I also need to keep, I think I need to assure everyone, maybe even myself, that again, probably not going to, probably going to be okay. I'm too afraid to say it's definitely going to be okay. Because if I say it's definitely okay, then God will go, oh, I'll change that. So I don't want to tempt fate. But I've noticed that people are reaching out and saying, hey, you know, 
sorry to hear that, you know, it's very nice of them to reach out. And I, but there's a part of me, the cynical part of me, which is all of me really, is they're just trying to, they're just trying to make sure they say something in case I do die tomorrow, then they can, then they can feel better about, well, at least I reached out. Or maybe, maybe that's what I would do or what I would think. Maybe I'm just projecting on them and, and uh, they, unlike me, are human beings. It could be many things. See, I'm supposed to be the guy who worries that something like this might happen and then it never happens. So is that the case? Like, I thought the whole point of worrying about something was that the harder I worry about it, the less likely it is to happen. I thought that's how it worked. Please, please correct me if I'm wrong. I, in all honesty, I have been eating more healthy. And I do feel better when I eat healthier. Much better, frankly. Much, much better when I eat healthier. So how long before I have pop tarts? I, I give it five minutes. Actually, what I need to do is go to the store and get some stuff, but I'm tired. So maybe I'll do it tomorrow. I found this new bread. It's keto bread. So I think it means there's, I don't know what it means. I think it means there's less gluten. I find it's less, it's a little easier on my stomach when I eat it. So, and then I'd ex I've been experimenting with different kinds of bread. The keto bread seems to be successful. The other kind of bread has the opposite effect. And I'm out of the keto bread and all I have left is the other bread. And bread is what my go-to so that I don't eat Pop-Tarts as I try to scale my way out of the junk food craze I've been living in for the past two years. After my mom died, I let go of the diet. Oh, this is also bringing up, like, I remember I was really trying to eat healthy before my cousin committed suicide. I mentioned this is a comedy podcast. <laughs> I was trying to eat healthy before my cousin committed suicide, and then I fell off the wagon after that. Then I was getting back to eating healthy again. Now, you know what I'm, my brain is doing now? Well, as soon as you start to eat healthy, someone else is going to die. So, to keep everyone alive, I think I need those, those Pop-Tarts. And that's... And that's what's, go, that's, that's what's going on when I'm left to my own devices. Maybe, maybe I need to rethink why I should be in a relationship. Because all this time I'm thinking, ah, I'm afraid to be in a relationship because what if it's a dysfunctional relationship? But maybe it needs to be a dysfunctional relationship because it's a distraction. I'll be so busy dealing with the horrible, horrible relationship that I won't have time to worry about all these other things. See, that right there is what I like to call a positive attitude. That's, that's what I, I need. I, I'm going about this the whole wrong way. I mean, this whole time I've been, you know, if there's someone I'm attracted to or attracted to me, and, you know, they have a, uh, you know, I'm sensing a red flag, like, oh, this isn't going to work. We're not going to get along. Maybe I need to double down. Maybe I need... even more, maybe I need at least five red flags. Maybe the new reason to reject someone is not enough red flags. I'm sorry, you're way too stable for me. This, I wanna leave nothing to chance on this. 
Maybe that maybe that's how I need to do this. I've had that thought before. Well, has it been about 20? It's been about 15 minutes. That's enough. That's where we're at right now. No new symptoms. Knock on wood. Obsessive compulsive is right where it needs to be. Poo poo poo. All right, well, I think, I think this is good. This feels like I accomplished something. Now, but can I be honest? I wanted to go all the way to 20. I feel better when it's a 20 minute podcast. There's no reason why. All right, let me think of one last thing to talk about. I mean, I could walk to this. Well, that's 11.25 already. I could walk to the store. I'm going to 7-Eleven. I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. I don't think I'm going to do a Pop-Tart. I might, I might just do some cranberry juice. All I, cheat, all I did today when I cheated, I had a few M&Ms, one little packet, and now I'm thinking maybe... We end the night with some cranberry juice, maybe. Or I get it tonight, and that's how I start my morning. The other thing I'm realizing is that, hey, if I have insomnia, maybe I shouldn't eat and drink pure sugar five minutes before I go to bed. How does that thought strike you? Perhaps I shouldn't do that. That might be a brilliant move. So I'm going to, uh, we'll see how it plays out. I have to walk back anyway. I I just, I do like to drink juice, but there's a lot of sugar in it. You know, you know what I could do? Here's what I could do. Maybe we split the difference. Maybe I get one of those um, juice, those pressed juices or something that has kale in it, but still enough sugar to drown a pony. I don't know who would drown a pony in sugar. I don't know where that came from. What are we arresting him for? He was drowning ponies in sugar. Like, what, like raw sugar? No, no, processed sugar. Oh, that's, well, that's another 10 years on the sentence, whatever it is. Drowning ponies? Who is this monster? And that's a lot of sugar. Why would you, why? why, why? <laughs> I, I really don't know where that came from. Listen, I have nothing but, but uh, respect for, y- y- I, not that I know where it came from, but can I, can I just say, I've had this thought for a long time, and I'm always afraid to talk about it because I feel like it's going to offend someone, but can, do, we need, do we need horses? I mean, domesticated horses. Can we let them go? People like to go horseback riding. I, I know it's, it's fun, but do, do we need it? I don't know, are they that, are they happy? I just, I don't know, maybe, maybe the, you know, I just, I need to know that the horse is okay with it. And then I'll ride the horse. Until I know for sure, and I don't know how, maybe we can teach it to communicate and it can just, even if it nods and says, yeah, it's fine. I need, I need some assurances that the horse does not mind me being on the horse. Because if I were the horse, I don't know that I'd care for this. Maybe they're fine with it. I mean, you know, they don't... Maybe it's easier than foraging for food. I don't know. But that's the thing. Whenever I, you know, whenever I see, like, horse racing, anything involving horses, I'm like... You know, haven't we? We got cars. Are we sure they're okay with it? I mean, I don't. 
I don't mean to be a bleeding heart here. Yeah, and by the way, I'm aware of the hypocrisy. I eat meat. I don't eat horse meat. I don't think they offer horse meat. That I'm aware of. Maybe, I don't know, is it in the hot dogs? I don't think I've eaten horse. I've never consciously said, I'm going to sit down and have some horse. That's never been... I've never been into that. If that means anything. But, uh, all right. Now we're at 20 minutes. Good way to end a podcast by saying I've never consciously eaten a horse. Which means I've unconsciously eaten a horse. we got to end the podcast. we got to end it here. <laughs>